Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Fisheries Division Chief Greg Power. Uh, today we're going to talk about some of the fall fisheries work that's going on, Greg. Uh, fisheries crews are busy even though summer's winding down. Yep, it's uh, you know, in the past when it came to fall work, we, when the kids would go back to college, we have a lot of summer help to help out things would start winding down for our fisheries staff and that's not the case in the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, we got a lot going on and it starts in the fall with the hydroacoustic sampling that goes on in Sakakuya because that's done in the last week of August generally, the latter part of August and that kind of is the crossover from summer activities into the fall activities. What is the hydroacoustic survey? Well they do that on, on Sakakuya, they're monitoring the cold water forage in the lake specifically rainbow smelt and uh, they run transects. They got to do it during the new moon in the dark of dark, you know, so in the middle of the night they go up, use a bunch of computer generated information, but basically uh, do the soundings of the entire, or the lower two thirds of the lake, looking at the biomass of smelt in the lake. Greg, tell me a little bit about some of the fall reproduction surveys going on, uh, Missouri sure. River and District Lakes. Right. And that's really, that's a kind of a meat, meat and potato activity. The guys have been, we've been doing this for a game, as long as Game and Fish has been around. The fall reproduction s uh, sampling that goes on, goes on statewide in all our, not all our lakes, but our priority lakes, our tier one and tier two water bodies. We're up to doing a, almost, somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 waters get sampled in the fall. We're looking for uh, basically reproduction of different fish. Did we have good reproduction of forage? Did we have good reproduction of maybe some of the predator fish? And also within we assess net are the stocking efforts. It, did we have success uh, with our walleye stocking, for example? So we run a couple different nets, uh, gill nets and a frame net. And uh, again, 150 lakes. And, it, and it's time consuming, I think, in the, it, by far for the fall activities. We have somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,500 hours into of, of staff time into just sampling our lakes out there. We don't get to them all, but it does provide some pretty valuable information. And that information is used to get next year and maybe uh, the stocking recommendations, what the, what the crew wants to stock the following year. Uh, what <coughs> method do you guys use like on the Missouri River with the current yeah, and stuff? Well, for the most part, we do netting in our, in our smaller lakes on the where you have super clear water, the Missouri River being one of them, we need to rely, the netting doesn't work so well. So we do uh, electrofishing, nighttime electrofishing. And we do basically the same thing. We have transects, we have set areas that we sample year after year. Uh, and we sample the dip net, the young of the year, fish that come up and uh, you know assess again as their natural reproduction. Some years the Missouri River, upper Lake Oahe have very good walleye reproduction, other years not so, but it's, it's important information for long-term management of these waters. Okay, let's move on. Uh, the fisheries crews are conducting a creel survey uh, at Lake Astropila. <coughs> We're in a rotation that we do our own creel surveys and that's where we go out and sample the, what the anglers are catching throughout the course of the year. And we have, a, we have a rotation where we have Devil's Lake and the Missouri River systems done once every third year. And then uh, an off year where neither of those are being done, we have uh, some time and money to hit some of the small lakes. This year it's Lake Ashtabula. So uh, the Jamestown crew has been out there sam sampling or surveying anglers as they come off the water to see their catch, how many hours they fish, just some of the basic information, but it helps you know, establish that good baseline. Uh, Greg, let's move on. Uh, in October, we start collecting salmon eggs yep. for, for the hatchery to raise yep. for the winter. Chinook salmon, uh, we have the, the disease-free status that we still have in our salmon at Garrison. We're the only one with the Missouri River system, the only disease-free salmon out there in all of North America. So we're kind of tied into every year having to get our own salmon, our own eggs. We've been at that, boy, since the late 70s. We've been taking Chinook salmon eggs the month of October, pretty much the entire month depending, but uh, we go all, again, we do a daytime electrofishing. We've changed our methodology. We've, d we've done a lot of nighttime electrofishing years ago. We had a salmon ladder at one time, uh, but we've kind of fall fallen into this routine and it's worked well. It's just daytime electrofishing, salmon in Sakak. We have the bays near the dam. And then we get some fish that come up the river, the Missouri River into the hatchery, right into the hatchery grounds itself. These, these fish are taken to the hatchery then, live, and then we, about once a day, once every couple days, we'll actually spawn them right there. T 
take the eggs we need for North Dakota, for Sukakwea the following year, the stock and the eggs will stay right there at the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. And uh, oh, we, our goal most years this year again will be somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe 1.3 million eggs. Thankfully, we've been, uh, we're getting the eggs the last few years and oftentimes we help out uh, South Dakota for Lake Oahe salmon stocking or Montana for peck stocking. So it's worked out well and we're expecting good things again this fall. Speaking of stocking, do we stock any fish in the, in the fall at all, yeah. Greg? Yeah, traditionally, historically, we stocked all our trout in the fall. <coughs> but in the last 10, 15 years, we've gone to these spring stocking of larger trout. But we still have a handful of lakes. So I think this fall, there's about a dozen lakes statewide that'll get uh, brown trout and or rainbow trout from Wyoming. Okay. So we'll have a couple trips going to Wyoming. And then we have some fish still up at the Garrison Dam National Fish Hatchery. They have a fish derby in the fall there on the grounds and then after that's done we put those fish into about three or four lakes across the state. Every year uh, we have a Save Our Lakes program that we try to go out and improve certain water bodies. Anything going on this fall? Yeah well we've had you know a few projects it's uh, those projects are fairly expensive so we can't do a lot of them in a year. We got a few going on this year they've pretty much wound down we just have one left and that's up at the Painted Woods uh, Lake near south of Washburn and it's we're trying to de develop a new little fishery there on the WMA that will be provide a nice little community fishery again like so many of these we've you know developed over the last 20 years across the state uh, and maybe be completed this fall depends probably in two years we'll have fish in there and it'll be a fishable little community fishery with all the water bodies in North Dakota, a lot of boat ramps, a lot of boat ramp maintenance. What what are the boat ramp crews doing here in the fall? In the fall, they 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 continue more of the more of the same. This year, we we the guys actually we did a record number of new boat ramps, poured ramps across the state. So some of the maintenance activities they're still trying to catch up on. The routine summer stuff has been you know delayed into the fall. Uh, this fall, I think they have a parking lot they need to work on create an all new parking lot. They have some reshaping of a reservoir shoreline and I know that they're going to work on uh, providing some spawning habitat, another small reservoir for bass. So they're, they'll be busy for another m month or two again. Okay and of course every year we talk about aquatic nuisance species. Anything going on in the fall with that? Well yeah, ANS, the monitoring is critical. I mean to know what we have out there so our coordinator, she gets across all the state and she's continuing monitoring and oh, there's probably a handful of larger waters that, that, that will go well into the fall. And then especially get in October, maybe even early November, the local entities, the park boards, the water boards start taking the uh, fishing docks and fishing piers out of the waters so you, you know to prevent ice damage. Uh, when that happens, our guys get out there and try to check all these hard structures looking for zebra mussel. You know, knock on wood, but we've, it, that's been a very unsuccessful effort on our end. And yeah. we want to keep it unsuccessful. Right. We have not found any zebra mussels other than the Red River, uh, but it's, we, we need to look. And we're, we're spending a lot of time looking nowadays. A lot of good information, Greg. Thank you. You bet. There are some fall hunting seasons already open, but some will open very soon. Grouse and partridge seasons open on Saturday, September 9th. The youth deer season opens Friday, September 15th. Youth waterfall season is set to open on Saturday, September 16th. The early waterfall season for residents opens Saturday, September 23rd, and the regular waterfall season opens Saturday, September 30th, along with the youth pheasant season. Pronghorn firearm season opens October 6th, and the regular pheasant season opens on Saturday, October 7th. And the deer gun season opens Friday, November 10th. For Greg Power and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.